I was able to step away from basketball on my terms. Played my 10 years, it was fun, but to be able to do what I love to do the second time around, it's been a blessing. Desmond Tremaine Mason, born October 11th, 1977. I dare you to name five two-foot jumpers better than today's feature in the history of basketball. Desmond Mason's name often isn't remembered, and when it is, he doesn't get enough credit for perfecting the art of dunking and using your athleticism. His highlights are literally all dunks, where the next one trumps the other by at least two points. He's played 10 seasons in the NBA, and growing up watching him year after year, you always thought, okay, this is going to be the season where he takes the next step and becomes at least what his athleticism suggested. And it's the most important lesson young hoopers of today can learn from his story. There has to be more. And I understand it. It takes a lot to perfect that part of basketball, so the hours put into training your body towards that goal, then practicing each dunk to perfection must take entire days. Not to mention the time you give up working on other skills because you're obsessed with the most exciting aspect of the game. Somehow, Desmond Mason found a way to make that his forte throughout his career while also showing glimpse of his playmaking ability, slashing, and until he got to the NBA, his shooting. He's never shot at least 30% from three in a season, and with all the athletic ability mixed with great size for his position, never shot at least 50% from the field. Doesn't mean he was a bad player at all, far from it. But I do agree with all the requests for his story because with his ability, he could have been better if these things didn't happen. Keep in mind, 10 years is a long time to play in the NBA. And when he was healthy and got the opportunity, he was a solid second to third option. In college, I think is where most that believed Desmond Mason could have been one of the greats of his generation first began to see his potential as he improved every season and along with his athleticism, he shot the ball pretty well, especially his senior year where he was solidly over 40%, attempting over four a game. So what happened? Let's talk about it. Salute to my man Gambit for this request, man. I know it took a long time, but we finally got it out. Salute to you. Appreciate the request. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Desmond Mason was a 6'7 small forward shooting guard from Waxahachie, Texas, but he's not just that. He's also an abstract expressionist in his life after the NBA. But art has always been on the mind of Mason, even through his aerial displays in-game, as alluded to earlier. After starring for his local high school, he accepted a scholarship to Oklahoma State University, where he'd stay all four years working on his game around his crowd-pleasing dunking exhibitions. Stunt number one, Master of One. I think the biggest and most obvious growth stunt for Desmond Mason and the first knock on most players that jump predominantly is what else does he do? In college, that question didn't exist because for the most part, he was as expected or better. As a freshman, he expectedly struggled adjusting to the college zone and Eddie Sutton's offense, averaging just four and a half points per game two rebounds, more turnovers than assists in a limited 16 minutes per. As just a freshman, he was allowed the benefit of the doubt, and that patience the program had with him began to pay off in his sophomore season. In more minutes, Mason moved up to become the team's third leading scorer and second leading rebounder. It's as if things just started to click, or it could have been his minutes doubling in that year and him starting every game. Either way, he was a human highlight reel from then on that in today's game could have left after that very season. In those times, it was normal to stay four years in college and it worked out for the program and Desmond. He improved once again as a junior, averaging more points, rebounds, and shooting percentages. 
While for sure you immediately noticed the outerworldly jumping skill he had, it was hard to see why Mason wouldn't be a great player on the next level with more space, an NBA ready body, and above the rim ability. Coming back for his senior year is where he really needed to show major improvement, especially as a shooter and playmaker, at least for himself, and he did just that. Shot 43% from three, went from 15 points a game to 18, and shot a career-high 76% from the free throw line. Oklahoma State had its best season of Mason's career playing deep in the tournament and losing in the East Regional to number five Florida. If I'm looking for a wing player with the individual improvements and team achievements Mason had, I'm not too sure on paper passing on him was something I would have done. He was taken 17th overall by the Seattle Supersonics and it seemed immediately his flaws began to show. He didn't stretch the floor well, nor create for himself at just six points a game, and the above average rebounding he did in college didn't immediately translate. Keep in mind, he was just a rookie. He won the slam dunk contest that year's All-Star game as well. In his second and third season, he showed consistent scoring improvement as well as rebounding, but still wasn't a good deep shooter for a shooting guard small forward, and those numbers wouldn't change much over his career. In that position, it's hard to cornerstone you in the franchise unless you bring other elite abilities like elite scoring or pretty much anything else. He did improve over the two and a half years in Seattle, but the team didn't feel it was enough outside of jumping not to include him for an attractive deal. Stunt number two, his jumper. To elaborate on one feature that if he had, he would have been one of the best players in the league. As a shooting guard, I don't think it needs to be mentioned that shooting from all levels on the floor can make or break your career. But for a player with all the other gifts, Mason was only missing that one thing. In all honesty, I think it's what first caught Seattle off guard and left the other teams he played on wishing would be developed one day soon. In college, he was a good shooter that put up more than a good sample amount per game to get you excited about his potential. But when he got to the league, it was just different. Maybe it was the longer distance, or now he was being defended by the best in the world, or quite possibly it could have been the illusion amateur sports creates where being able to shine for a program you chose that best fits your skills and gave you optimum opportunity played a role. Whatever it was, teams that gave Mason high minutes couldn't be as dynamic on the floor with a player that needed most of his opportunities created for him through fast breaks or lob passes. What's worse is he suddenly stopped taking them when he got to the league, only attempting at least one a game once in his career. He made up for it by improving his scoring over the years, but that scoring didn't suffice for what a team loses when your starting shooting guard can't and refuses to shoot. Predictable was the name of the game for Mason's offense over time, making him a liability for a team hoping to get to the level of a contender. Stunt number three, it only works for so long. The final stunt that I think held Mason back from being the player most saw him becoming was everything mentioned earlier can only work for so long. In 0405, he had his best scoring season in his third year after being traded to the Milwaukee Bucks, but his rebounds were down significantly, his field goal percentage and three point percentage as well, while playing a career high in minutes. A huge reason is because at this time, due to injuries and the natural wear and tear a jumper like Mason inevitably will face, he wasn't as athletic as he was before and teams figured his game out without him adjusting over the years. A heavy price is paid for having elite athleticism. You either are at risk for significant injuries or your body naturally losing a step here and there that changes your entire game into something you didn't prepare for. 
he was traded to the New Orleans slash Oklahoma City Hornets before back to Milwaukee, returned to OKC, and finally Sacramento, where his production dwindled every season since 0405. All in all, I still think Mason was a solid player that had he been on better teams that fit his slashing style of play and had better players to where he could be a legit third option consistently, like in hindsight he should have been, his career could have went a lot different. Like I said, still solid and he got to play 10 seasons at a high level. His art and creativity didn't stop there. He's now a serious artist that paints for high paying clients and reasons near and dear to his heart. He seems to have become a great person and I wish him nothing but the best. But for these reasons, his growth was stunning. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth and I'm out.